Coreboot is an open source BIOS replacement. So we erase the factory BIOS that was shipped with the mainboard and we flash Coreboot into the chip instead, together with a payload so that the system can start up. Well, one of the advantages is boot speed. Uh, core boot typically finishes in just a few hundred milliseconds and the standard factory BIOS usually takes a lot longer. So boot speed is always nice and for some applications it might even be critical. So a uh, standard BIOS has uh, really two tasks that it does. It does hardware initialization and then it boots the operating system by reading uh, the master boot record from a hard drive, for example, or a floppy drive. Core boot is only the hardware initialization part and the payload that uh, I refer to is the second part. And the payload can really be, as you said, any program. It can either be a BIOS compatibility layer or it can be a bootloader which is stored directly in the boot flash so that you don't even need a uh, hard drive to start your system. And it can finally uh, also be applications or even the operating system kernel itself if you have a large enough flash chip. This is, this is very different. Typically we see that the smaller hardware designers are much easier to communicate with and much easier to work with. We also found out that um, it's, there's a very big difference between the hardware manufacturers that produce the chipsets and the CPUs for the project. So uh, to name a couple, Intel is, is uh, fairly difficult to get documentation and information from. VIA is um, a little bit easier and AMD are the real stars because they actually send us code and uh, also documentation. So they're contributing significantly to the project. So they, they made a press release recently, the, the last week or so, that they are going to support Coreboot themselves on uh, all their future CPUs and chipsets. And they want to do this because they see many advantages with core boot, especially in the embedded segment, where the boot time is, is critical and where maybe also the ability to review the source code is quite important for security reasons. And it's um, also easy to write customizations or make customizations of the source code because it's written in C and many, if not most, of the commercial BIOS products are all written in assembly language. That's, that's completely true, of course. There's a license cost with uh, the proprietary or the commercial BIOS, BIOS vendors. They each uh, want a royalty fee for the sticker that is on the flash chip on every mainboard. And, well, as you said, Cobert is open source, so there's no per unit royalty fee. And um, that, even though the development, initial development cost might be a bit higher, many times the um, these manufacturers, they have a large enough volume that it, it's uh, an easy choice to spend a little bit more time up front developing and then not having to pay the royalties per unit. Well, not take over as in take control over the project or, or um, make the project disappear or anything like that, but I, I certainly hope that more mainboard vendors will be interested in using Coreboot on their mainboards and uh, shipping it with, with their boards from, from the beginning, especially since we, through this payload, uh, payload concept, can really offer all the existing functionality of a standard commercial BIOS, and we can also allow a lot, uh, a lot of new innovative features and, and possibilities that the mainboard vendors should find interesting. So it's, it's all about the mainboard vendors. Uh, really, we would of course like them to, to start shipping core boot so that more people can, can get access to this, um, this new uh, way of, of booting the system and the new features that are in core boot. Personally, I, I also think it would be good for, for development of PC hardware that uh, the firmware is a little bit more, well, 
that it evolves a little bit quicker than perhaps the, the proprietary firmware has done so far. I think that would help, especially with power management features in PCs, to, to make PC systems use less power uh, in general. It can be a bit of a challenge. So if it depends a lot on if the uh, chipset and the CPU is already supported by Core Boot, then creating a port, as we call it, for a new mainboard might not be very difficult. Maybe, uh, well, in the best case, it might only take a day. In the worst case, it could take maybe a month or, or a few months. But if nothing is really supported, it's a completely new platform, then I would um, expect a minimum of eight man months to develop the chipset support and the CPU support. Um, the memory controller initialization in particular takes, takes a lot of time because it's a complicated process. And then finally adding the, by the time uh, the developer is going to add the mainboard support, he will already know, well, both know Core Boot very well and also know in particular the hardware platform. So adding the mainboard support will be the easy part. But really, it's a, it's, it can be a, a tremendous effort to to create this core boot support for chipsets and for, for CPUs. And a lot of documentation is needed as well, as I, as I mentioned, which can be difficult to get hold of unless it happens to be AMD because they publish it online. So we, we try to write as much as possible in C in the C programming language because we find it much more efficient to work with. I personally think that writing assembly code is a lot of fun, but it also it takes a lot of time. So uh, we, we try to minimize the assembly code uh, that we have in Core Boot. There is some, there needs to be some in, in a few uh, critical places, but overall I would say more than 95% uh, of the Core Boot code base is actually C language. C language code and to be able to do that we use a few tricks. We use cache as RAM where we switch the CPU cache into, um, uh, we, we use the CPU cache as a sort of memory uh, so that we can have a call stack so that we can use a standard C compiler to, write, uh, to, to compile our code that it will run also before we have configured the RAM controller. Coreboot Core Boot is definitely a framework. Uh, we, we also have a couple of infrastru infrastructure projects within Coreboot where we try to make this framework even better and try to make it easier and faster to create support for new hardware. Very much, um, very much a framework and um, then we plug in components for or support for components, the hardware components around the framework.